and went on to have a very distinguished career in the cheese industry. I had the opportunity to meet Dorothy when she was here for a, I think it was a 1950s reunion uh, a few years ago. I had, had a chance to talk to her, and she was so full of excitement for the time that she spent here at Iowa State. For you young people, you may not realize that our building is called the Dairy Industries Building when you walk in the front door. And dairy was what we were known for in the early 30s uh, when we were first uh, in, you know, in part of the Iowa State campus. And you may also realize that this building, the Food Sciences Building, was the fourth building that was constructed on campus. And it's, it's situated sort of on the quad uh, of buildings one of the earliest buildings showing the importance of dairy to Iowa State, to the state of Iowa and to Iowa State University. So we're very thrilled to have this opportunity to, to talk a little bit more. We're going to hear more about Dorothy from her sons uh, and uh, from, from, you know, the, from Stephanie. We'll talk a little bit more about the way that the food science and dairy have evolved. But this is an opportunity for us to learn a little bit more about our history and to share this wonderful so Stephanie's going to talk a little bit about what we're doing with cheese here at Iowa State University. Hello. Thank you all for coming. I'm particularly happy to see the next generation of dairy foods folks with us. Uh, a bunch of these folks over here are students, and some of them are in the animal science department, and some of them are in the food science department. But I've had an opportunity to interact with them uh, and hopefully give them a little sense of the excitement there is in dairy foods. So thanks especially to you guys for coming and supporting this event. Uh, I've been here for about eight years, uh, but before coming here, uh, I'll just give you a little background about why I'm in dairy. I grew up on a small farm in Massachusetts, and dairy goats were my 4-H project. And I, at the time, I, as I was growing up, I thought that uh, I wanted to be a veterinarian. I'd never known anything about uh, food science. I didn't know it was an option until I went to college and my uh, end of my sophomore year, I, I took my first class in, uh, in the Department of Food Science. I took a class called Ice Cream and Frozen Desserts. And, I, and the book that I had was written by your grandfather. <laughs> so the connections are with Iowa State and, and dairy go, go deep and they're connected in a lot of different ways. Uh, so I discovered food science by mistake. I wanted to do some undergraduate research on goat milk. And I thought that being an animal science bachelor's degree student, I thought I could just do research on goat milk in, animal, in the animal science department. They said, no, 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 we don't do that. We work with the animals. And, uh, where you want to go is food science. So that's when I discovered food science, and that's when I took that milk and frozen desserts class and realized, wow, I really like these people, and I really like this field. And that's where I've been ever since. And so my, my, my background is goat cheese. Uh, that's what has, that, that was the basis, and, and I've always enjoyed educating. I've always enjoyed teaching. When I, when I was uh, raising goats and in 4-H, I always found myself defending goats and trying to, <laughs> really seriously, yeah. people would go to the fair and they'd say, oh, goats, they eat anything, they're so dirty, they eat anything, and I was always defending goats and explaining how picky they were. They're actually very picky eaters, and I was always having to defend them. And it's funny, because it was, it was dealing with controversial issues, trying to break myths. So, Jack knows, I teach a whole class on myth-busting related to dairy foods, and uh, that's, that's an opportunity to, to really uh, expose people to the reality of dairy foods. So Iowa State, the history is, is long. Uh, and we were very active in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and even into the 60s with dairy foods. Uh, Dorothy, Renter was here in 1949. She started as an undergraduate student, and she also discovered food science, as far as I can tell, by mistake also. So I may not have a lot in common with her, but I thought that that was a commonality, because she was working for her dad, 
and they were having some problems with cheese, and so she came to Iowa State College at the time to solve a problem. And they said, well, why don't you go to school here? And so she did. That's the impression I get. I don't know if it's true. We're, hopefully they'll, 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 they'll tell the truth. <laughs> That's the impression I get from the video I saw of her, her talking about her, her, uh, her time, uh, her, her, kind of her history, the little bit that I've, I've seen. So 1949, the very first dairy technology graduate. graduate. So she graduated in 1953, and there's her picture in, in her class, her class picture. Uh, great picture. So we're missing two people here, but, but you can see the rest of her class. Really quite special. Yeah. Back then, our, uh, we had a dairy products evaluation team in the dairy products evaluation competition way back then. Uh, number two graduate student in the nation, was it, or number three? Number three. <laughs> and we've got a couple who are competing this year. Evan and Tim, hopefully, will maybe, yeah, let's see, see, who all, <laughs> see who all makes the team. But that team had disappeared for about 30 years. Because in the 70s, the milk producers in the area saw Iowa State as being unfair competition because of the different tax structure of a university. So we lost the University Creamery for about 30, 35 years. And Iowa State had the vision. Uh, they realized that dairy was growing in the state. And they said, we need to hire somebody who focuses on dairy. And about that time, I was really looking for a career change. I had been at Washington State University for 11 years as a, on faculty, and I was just ready for a change. And uh, so I applied for the job, and, and it was a great fit. It was a great fit, in large part because of the, the real hands-on, real dedication to outcomes assessment and hands-on learning, and I really got a sense that teaching was important here. And that has always been important to me. So teaching the truth, teaching, hands-on, all of those things have, have really always been a part of my life and why I wanted to come to this institution and bring dairy back to life. And Iowa State has been very supportive of that. And along those lines, this is just one, this is just one piece, just another piece, our alumni giving back. Our alumni saying, this is where I started and I want to give back. So we've got got students here are going into the dairy industry for about 35 years we, we couldn't really do that because we couldn't we didn't have the kind of training that we we have now we're buying equipment to give them that hands-on dairy experience so making yogurt making ice cream making cheese so tomorrow I know some folks in here are entering that ISU signature ice cream contest you know you need to get get home to finish that video I know <laughs> So I won't, I won't say much more, other than that I'm just really excited that, that Iowa State is, is committed to uh, making dairy a bigger part of the university, of the institution, preparing students to go out into dairy jobs in our state and, and uh, adjoining states, rather than our students graduating and going far away. Now they can, they can stay close by, and people can come from around the country and world to get trained in dairy here. That's what I would like to see. And donors like you make that possible because now we'll be able to buy equipment and have resources to, to do that kind of training to, to help prepare the future generations. I think that was more than I intended to say. <laughs> but thank you all for your support and especially for you. can see the enthusiasm that Stephanie brings to our dairy program. So it's wonderful to have, have her here. I want to make sure that you all got a chance to taste the cheese and pick up one of these little flyers about, about the cheese. Um, so we're going to hear now about how the merger of Dorothy's and her husband's company, and by the way, her husband was a graduate of Iowa State too, as we forgot to mention. You know, he was also one of our grads, but he was a guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same class. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you Stephanie. And it's always good to see kind of huge difference of ages here. Uh, 
very young, less young. But... <laughs> 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 Did you say you catch it? I said not pointing anyone out. No. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> You're good. You're good. So yes, I'm Dominic. I'm very happy to, to, to be. It's a very to be here with you tonight. It's a very special moment. And I will get a bit through the journey, so less from, from a technical standpoint than you, Stephanie, you're way better than me, uh, just to go back to the history of our group and how all this happened, because it's also my journey, meaning when I took over the company, which is only one year and a half ago, you know, we, we, uh, we came back to, to this story. And as I often say, to understand the future, you, you need to understand where you come from and this is all my best that I could stop here and, but I will develop a little bit not to bother you too much. So I'm just you as you may understand I'm French. Uh, I was living oddly in the UK before managing our operation in, in, in Great Britain and I moved in the US with my wife obviously because you know my children are like you. <laughs> so they are studying elsewhere but uh, it's, it's the way it is. I never thought felt I will travel you know but I, I will you know, I was making a career in France, and you know, at an old age, I was suddenly uh, appointed uh, abroad. But uh, it's an experience. So I did the other way around. Uh, very often, people start by traveling. <laughs> I'm traveling on my uh, at the end of my career, if I can put it this way. So just a bit about us, and we go back to Dorothy, which is the the, the, the main character, and uh, why we are all united this evening together. So Salencia is still a family-owned company. It's a five billion. Uh, so average, average turnover in, in this business, and because they are much bigger companies, are also smaller, but 5 billion turnover, we employ 20,000 20, people all over the world, 500 in the US, 600 in the US, because we have a non-dairy business, a septic business, and a cheese business, obviously, which is obviously the most important one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, so we are 600 in the US, and what is interesting, so we are still a family-owned company, and our founder, which is Jean-Noël Bongrain, because our group before was Bongrain, so maybe you know, uh, some of us, uh, some of you know, uh, know us better on our Bongrain, um, really was very successful, created a huge business in France with one uh, key uh, mindset, uh, everything needs to be rooted locally, meaning we have a, a factory doing cheese with people, doing their business, creating their brands, selling to the trade. This was, that's why we say we are a group, but we are not known as Salencia, we are known through our brands all over the world. And this is still very much our uh, mindset. Uh, so, um, uh, if I don't want to go much in the, the milestones, but maybe I can go quickly to the US because our founder started, you know, after having succeeded in France, uh, he started uh, operations in the US. Uh, he first bought a white cream cheese uh, business uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, where we still have our headquarters, um, in uh, New Holland, working the majority of my time, 20%. Uh, um, uh, but it's still our, uh, uh, our headquarters and where we had our first brand, by the way, which is Alouette. Uh, Alouette Spreads that you, that, you, that you may know, which is more uh, an entertaining and you know, uh, um, uh, yeah, an, an entertaining brand, uh, mainly focusing on spreads. We do some, some soft apple cheese, but it's not our DNA on, on this field. And after, in 85, uh, he acquired uh, Lena Factory uh, that he bought from uh, uh, your mother, uh, Jim and... Uh, by the way, come with me because uh, these are the most important guys. Uh, Jim and Fred uh, uh, Demeter, so the children of uh, Dorothy. They don't look like children. <laughs> so, uh, 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 and probably one of the reasons why Jean-Noël uh, wanted to acquire this uh, this, uh, this business is because your, your mother, first, they were more or less the same generation. Huh? Jean Louis is now turning 89, I think. Your mother will turn 26. Uh, okay. And when you look at uh, what Dorothy did and what Jean Noël did in France, it's more or less the same thing. It was all about uh, artisanal approach, 
uh, trying, trying things. She was doing Swiss uh, cheese, she was doing feta, she was one of the first ones doing soft wrap and cheese in, in the US. And this is exactly how Jean-Louis started, because all the, our story started with soft, soft wrap and cheese. He built a brand that you don't know, because you, uh, except if you were from France, which is Caprice de Dieu, Whim of God, if you know of translated brands. This brand, which is a huge uh, brand in, the, in France and in Europe. Uh, and which is a pure soft wrap and cheese uh, uh, product. So this is probably the reason why Jean Noël was so uh, interested in, uh, in, in, this, uh, in this company. And so Lena Factory you know, was just a creator in our uh, business since 1996, we said, 1996, so, um, so 30 years ago. And then the, the, the factory and the, the business was moving forward, developing soft wrap and cheese uh, mainly. Uh, even if we did also some uh, uh, some uh, Swiss uh, yeah. at this point of time, but mainly soft wrap and cheese. And you see, it's an easy job. So uh, moving forward, I will now. Uh, I think it's way better to hear about Dorothy uh, from you, Frank, and from Eugene, who are our intimate children. Thank you. Well, a few stories to share. In it, but I'm Fred Meter, Dorothy's oldest son. Unfortunately, Dorothy can't attend to this because her health is declining enough that she's not able to travel. So Dorothy lives in a skilled nursing home facility in Monroe, Wisconsin. And uh, my brother and I are here on her behalf. So it's, uh, it's great that Sabencia Cheese is donating money to Iowa State University on behalf of Dorothy's achievements, achievements as a first woman to graduate with a degree in dairy science. Also, I would like to thank the Iowa State University for enrolling Dorothy here. As if she didn't, had not attended this university, she would not have met her Jim, my father. <laughs> <laughs> Jim came from, from Greece. He was from, a, he was over here, as a, they called it a full bright scholar from Greece, is what it was termed back then. And he was here for the dairy science run, too. So, uh, so when mom came back, this is a story, when mom came back from Ames, Iowa here, she told her father she wanted a new cheese factory. She wasn't happy with it. Her father said, you don't know what it takes to build one. <laughs> so then we just fast forward 30 years later, and Lena, the plant had become, expanded so many times it was just too small and crowded. And with funding from KD Industries, which owned us during the 70s and 80s, in 1982, Construction began of a new cheese factory, and by late summer of 1983, it was completed. Dorothy did get a new cheese factory so we could more than double our baby Swiss production and expand our soft ripened cheese and feta production with a much larger facility and more modern manufacturing and equipment from Germany and Denmark. And then in 1987, Savencia Cheese purchased Coblina cheese from KD Industries. And Sabencia since then has been pouring millions into cold Lena every year, making huge investments, much improving the soft cheese production to be more efficient, plant operations environmentally friendly, and safety oriented in a very competitive cheese market these days that we have. And I'm still employed by Sabencia Cheese and have been working in cold Lena cheese for more than 40 years that my great-grandfather, Fred Cole, founded back in 1925 in the village of Lena. And then the marketing group of Sebastian Cheese wanted to start, it was kind of Dominic had said some of this, uh, Cold Lena's very own brand name product related, relating to the history of Cold Lena. I was asked several months ago to supply them with some history of Cold Lena. And that was pretty easy to do since my mother she almost uh, wanted to be a history teacher instead of enrolling in dairy science. And so she had a history, a book about cold land she had already written. <laughs> and it's true, it's true. So Samantha G was so impressed with my mother's story that they decided to name a new product after her. And that's Dorothy's Artisan Cheese. The Demeter family is honored that Samantha Cheese decided to do this. We cannot thank them enough. What a great way to preserve my mother's story. And, and then uh, when I saw my, when I broke the news to my mother, 
that uh, they want to name a product after her. She was speechless at first, but then had a smile on her face, and she says uh, she was worried about the sales, saying that, well, it's a tough market out there. I just can't get out there and help them sell it. <laughs> I said, she didn't really need that. I told her not to worry. All she had to do was approve the use of her name and share this, her story with the stores that would be selling Dorothy Cheese along with the customers. And understand that the story will also be out on the internet. There's a video that will be out there too. So I just want to thank them, Iowa State University and Savencia Cheese for doing this. Already Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they already have the story and the website beginning of December. <laughs> so, so if you search like Dirty's Cheese on Facebook, you will come across it. Yeah. Already. You can Google it. Iowa State to attend Iowa State 
I was even told he was such a good student, he was allowed to stay in the basement of the old Dairy Science building. Um, here he also met his future bride, Dorothy. He earned a master's degree in dairy science and a minor in animal husbandry. I even heard that when his studies were done, he helped secure a milk pasteurizer for Greece through UNICEF. He wrote many articles of this beautiful country and the abundance of everything. He traveled and worked around northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin before settling down with Dorothy and Lena. I really enjoyed one of their stories about their honeymoon when they went back to Greece. They sailed on the Ile de France, a product that is made by Semencia. Uh, and while in Greece, something happened to the Turkish embassy and the Greek government was calling up all their officers and dad happened to be an officer. So they had to leave the country fast. They had to get out fast. His family began digging up gold coins buried in the backyard to get them out of the country. So I guess Greeks had trouble with their money paying their debts. <laughs> <laughs> so they got, them, they got them out of the country in the middle of the night. They, they sailed to New York City, but they were out of money. Well, mom knew of a customer that they had, so they visited, and the customer gladly helped them out to get them back to Lena. So back in Lena, they made so many different types of soft drink and cheeses, and they never forgot their beginnings. They made many different soft drink and cheeses. They helped perfect the Iowa-style baby Swiss. And in the early 70s, Dad was one of the first domestic cheesemakers to make feta. It's something I have continued to work on with feta. In 2006, I became a certified Wisconsin feta master cheesemaker in feta cheese. Um, Mom and Dad invited many people from other countries to come and work with them, many of them going on to be very important people in big companies. My parents were always open to showing anyone how we did things. They formed, they formed partnerships with uh, a lot of different companies. Um, I, I know uh, uh, Iowa State constantly brought people through the plant. They would they'd come and make a field trip. And, um, their partnerships they formed with, they had, because we had growing sales, we provided our partners with quality and, and production standards. And still today, someone will recognize my name and will ask me if I'm related. And I would say, yeah, they were my parents. And they're so amazed. And then the stories really begin. And it all started here at Iowa State. So thank you. I'm Dorothy DeVater. And uh, That's four years ago. I was born into the cheese making business as the granddaughter of Fred. Kolb. and we've been making cheese and winning prizes and enjoying serving in various restaurants, hotels, and people throughout the land. And consequently, that ended up being how and why I ended up being a graduate of Iowa State University. I didn't get replies from the University of Wisconsin, so we came to Iowa State. We knew some of the professors already, and, and they said, well, why don't you have, have your daughter come out to Iowa State? We have a very good school. She would be our first girl to enter the school, and um, whatnot all, and it was, it was a great challenge because I had never had to get up at four o'clock in the morning and empty milk cans. Yeah, it was much. It was just terrible to Iowa State because you had to lift this up clear from the floor level, like, and up into this tank, which was waist high. And I said, after a very short period of time, I had trouble with my back and different things, and my veins on my body actually came to the surface. I could just see every vein on my body going down here. Because we didn't have that in Lena. We had everything waist high, and you just had to tip the can holder over. I had to struggle through everything and do everything I expected the boys to do. And I was picking these cans up and full of milk, and it was heavy. 
Yeah, well, I, was, I had to be that way all the way in Iowa State because there was no girls. They never had never had a girl taking any of these classes. It was kind of a little bit, well, what's she doing here and why we got a girl in our group? And <laughs> we managed, I said, well, you gotta accept me. I grew up in a cheese factory and I'll manage to get along with what you have to do here. And we worked it all out together. And I ended up being secretary of the uh, Iowa State Dairy Club for one year. I'm happy to see it's still producing and being capable of continuing to uh, supply products to the market. Mm -hmm. Dorothy? Thank <laughs> you.